Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vagam Maradian here in Doha, Qatar, where, we're co where we are covering the Doha International Maritime Defense Exhibition and Conference, DIMDEX 2018. And our coverage here is sponsored by DIMDEX 2018. And we're positively honored to have with us uh, Dr. Khaled Al Atia, uh, who is uh, the Deputy Prime Minister of Qatar, as well as the Minister of State for Defense Affairs. Sir, thanks very much. You just signed a big helicopter contract, and we're honored uh, that you're spending a few minutes with us. Uh, most welcome. Happy to see you with us today. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a pleasure. I want to start uh, with sort of the big strategic question. Uh, your neighbors, Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, uh, are blockading the country. Their accusation is that uh, Qatar has backed uh, extremists, that it's meddled in internal affairs, that its relationship is too close to Iran. How do you respond uh, to those uh, act? You know, the, the Saudis have called for the Al Thani family that's ruled here since 1825 to step down. How do you? How does? How do you respond uh, to those allegations? These days, uh, we don't have time to, uh, uh, you know, bother ourselves of what they are doing. We have a vision here in Qatar. We are working to uh, achieve our vision in all aspects. Uh, one of which is the defense and to develop our defense capability. So actually, we are uh, focusing on our country development and prosperity. Um, how uh, how has this crisis changed your strategic calculus uh, in terms of the alliances? For example, you've drawn much closer to Turkey, for example, and there's a tremendous Turkish delegation that's been here. Um, how has it changed your strategic calculations? Actually, we have a traditional ally and friend, for example, the United States. Our relation with Turkey uh, goes way back as well. We have a we have a cooperation on all aspects with our uh, uh, Turkish uh, friends. And uh, that's been uh, for a long time now. And uh, uh, it's pity what's uh, happening in the GCC. You know, uh, uh, as uh, you know, we have been ambushed on uh, one day. And uh, this, if uh, anything, uh, this is uh, distracting our joint effort with our allies uh, from the outside the region uh, to combat uh, terrorism and you know uh, counter them um, do you think what will it take to resolve the crisis from your standpoint and do you think that it will that that relationships will go back to the way they were i think uh, uh, you know we said this before uh, the uh, the government of qatar said this before his highness the emir the foreign minister and i say it now that's the only way is dialogue if they are ready for dialogue, then I think this is the only way out. We are open to negotiate anything, and uh, but this has to be uh, with uh, uh, respect, each country uh, sovereignty, and uh, in the end of the day, this is the shorter way to solve any issue, to have a frank dialogue. Um, there are those who say that actually this pressure could drive Qatar into Iran's orbit or Ru Russia's orbit or China's orbit. How do you respond to folks who, who suggest that? Unlike the other, Qatar is not a premature country. Uh, Qatar uh, is a sovereign, uh, uh, very well, uh, you know, uh, you know, very well matured, and we know uh, how to uh, deal with our uh, international obligation, and how to deal with our neighbors, how to respect them, and how to impose our respect on others as well. Um, the President uh, Trump has changed the Secretary of State. Rex Tillerson uh, was well known in the region, uh, well respected, had many friends because of his time at ExxonMobil. Uh, now Mike Pompeo is uh, pending congressional approval or Senate approval, going to become the next Secretary of State. He's much more hawkish. He's opposed to the Iran or has been very critical of the Iran deal, uh, nuclear deal, as has uh, President Trump. From your perspective, as somebody who's just a few hours uh, by boat away from uh, Iran, what are the potential implications for uh, Qatar in the event that the nuclear deal unravels? Well, uh, Qatar uh, position is very clear, uh, and we always encourage, again, we always encourage makeable settlement for the region, uh, you know, uh, um, situations, if I may call. And we always been calling for uh, regional uh, dialogue for security. Uh, and uh, we are uh, looking also to have a role for the United States as a friend and ally to encourage everyone in the region to have sort of uh, this uh, regional security uh, arrangements. 
Um, let me ask you about uh, the base Al-Udeed. Uh, we visited there today. We talked to General Harigian, who is the uh, commander of U.S. Air Force's Central Command. Uh, there are voices in the United States that, who have called for uh, the CAOC to be moved from Al-Udeed and that presence to be relocated. Uh, when we talk to folks on the base, they're very happy with the relationship and the investment that Qatar has made. Talk to us a little bit about what the plan that you have to further invest uh, in the base. And uh, conversely, under what circumstances you know, do you think that would there ever be a, a circumstance where Qatar might ask the United States to leave that base? Well, actually, the relation between Qatar and the United States uh, uh, is a very old relation, strategic one. And uh, the things which we do together in all aspects, not only military to military, uh, show, uh, show, shows and prove every day uh, the depth of that relation. What we do in Al-Daid or what we do to make the uh, stay comfortable of our friend and ally uh, has nothing to, uh, to uh, you know, seduce or uh, uh, pledge anyone uh, to do anything. Uh, out of the contest of the agreements and the, uh, you know, friendship uh, relation which we have. Uh, yes, we are trying uh, now to uh, build uh, some new facilities, and this is only to make the families of the Al uh, Air Airbase more comfortable, and this will give us a chance to do our job together and to conduct our operation. Uh, uh, you know, in, in a very, in a better uh, condition. Uh, you're in the midst of a very major military modernization. Uh, I think everybody has noticed that, uh, you know, uh, uh, F-15s, Eurofighter, Rafale, ground vehicles, uh, a number of uh, naval contracts. We talked to the Finn uh, Cantieri guys who were working on that contract. Uh, and then you signed another deal with uh, Turkish shipyards for another 10 Corvettes. Um, Talk to us a little bit about how you're going to integrate all of these diverse systems together. I mean, most nations look to buy one new aircraft and then make an upgrade. You have F-16s in your force, you have Mirages, but now you're also going to be getting three new types of very high-end airplane. How are you going to manage to integrate all of this equipment into a seamless joint force? Yeah, this is a legitimate question. We don't have F-16, by the way. Oh, I'm sorry. We have the F-15 to, to join us. And, right. uh, uh, I'll, uh, let me assure you one thing, that uh, the best soldier and officer on this region ever you will find is the Qatari soldier. And I am, you know, uh, I am sure of what I am saying. We have a best uh, training programs. Uh, we have best program to integrate all the system we are buying. Two things we want to do. We want to stop uh, calling uh, 911 every time we have a crisis in the region and put the burden on our friend and ally. We want to do this with them side by side if anything happened, God forbidden, in the region. This is one reason why we are enhancing and enforcing ourselves. Secondly, we believe strongly that uh, stability and prosperity uh, needs a deterrent to keep them uh, existing and long lasting. Uh, we are not a country uh, or a seeker of war. We are a seeker of peace, of uh, development and prosperity. But alongside this, you need to have a deterrent force to keep the stability uh, intact. Uh, let me ask you one last question. It's a regional question. Um, across the region, there is conflict. When, As you go from the Mediterranean all the way over, uh, concerns about Iran, the Shia-Sunni divide, uh, Iraq is, is still... Um, three nations under one flag that's trying to forge a common identity. What, from your perspective, what are some of the key mechanisms and ways of thinking to get to a brighter future? You know, from, from your perspective, if you were sitting at the table and negotiating this, as you are in some of these cases, what's the advice you give? What's the strategic plan you would offer in order to address these challenges? It is not my uh, perspective. It is His Highness the Emir vision of how to solve the issue of the region. And he called for a, a security dialogue to uh, touch on all the uh, regional security matter. We need to have a framework. We need to have sort of agreement among the uh, region uh, player to have an umbrella 
for the security on this region. And that's mean for sure, bringing Iraq in and, and Syria in. And the end of the day, I think the region are tired of wars. And it is about time now to speak about development and prosperity covered by a good, solid uh, security agreement among this regional players. Sir, thanks very much. You've been very generous with your time. We very much appreciate it. Thank you very much. And I hope to see you next time in Doha. Thank you. Looking forward to it. Thank you.